Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. I'm taking a walk through a National Trust site and the surrounding areas to see what I can find to forage. I've got a general idea of what I want to find, but I'll be keeping my eye out for anything else. The main reason I've come out today is to do my yearly pick of hazelnuts. So I've got my basket and let's see what we can find. One of the reasons I like visiting National Trust sites and stately homes and places like that is because you get big open fields with individual trees or small bunches of trees like this and they get a lot of sunlight so more fruit and also because it's not a woodland it's not being stripped bare by squirrels in fact I've not seen any squirrels around here and the grey squirrel, which is very invasive in the UK, would have eaten all of these hazelnuts by now. And you can see these trees are absolutely full of them. And a lot of these are a decent size as well. I've got no problem taking quite a lot of these hazelnuts because the only other creature that really eats these are the grey squirrel which is as I said highly invasive in the UK so I've got no problem taking their food and I will pick these towards the end of August or early September it doesn't matter if they're not fully brown on the shell you see like this one it's just starting to go brown the main thing is when you pull it out of that leafy bract that it's got some browning around this area here if it's still like completely bright green all the way around, then they're probably not fully developed yet. I'm gonna collect a good amount of these. There's quite a few trees in this park. So what I'll do is I'll take them home and I'll remove them all from these bracts and just leave them for a week or so just to fully ripen at home on the windowsill. So I think this year I'm going to make a hazelnut butter and maybe some homemade Nutella. It just started raining again. So I'm gonna go hide under the tree. I should still be able to pick some from this side anyway. So here's what I've picked after about 15 minutes. These trees are absolutely loaded. This is just a fraction of what are on the trees. One of the trees has got absolute beauties on there. These are really nice sized hazelnuts. I think hazelnuts are ridiculously expensive for how common they are in the UK. I think a small bag costs you a couple of pound. And these trees are absolutely covered in them. I'm just picking the ones that are within reach. Higher up on the tree, there's masses more as well. That's not a bad little harvest there. I'm gonna move on to the next plant, which is right next door. This is a hawthorn. And I'm gonna pick some of these lovely hawberries. Now that they're nice and deep red color, they're ripe and ready to pick. These can be eaten raw. They've got a texture quite similar to a perfectly ripe avocado. I've got not much of a flavour, 
What I'm going to do with these, something that I do most years, I'm going to make a hawberry ketchup. The quickest and easiest way I've found of picking these, instead of just trying to pull them off, that would sometimes bring the twigs with it, just grab a few of them and just twist them and they come off like that. So you're basically just twisting them off the stem. And just like the hazelnut trees I was picking from, because they're in an open area and getting lots of sunlight, the fruits are a nice decent size. And there's lots of them. These are quite an important food source for overwintering birds. So I don't take too many from one tree. But again, I'm only picking the fruits that I can reach. All right, that'll do from this spot. Move on. I might get some more hawberries later on. But let's take a walk, see what else we can find. Here we have a crab apple tree. I'm not sure if they'll be quite ripe yet, but have a look. Actually, yeah, they don't look too bad. They've got a very sharp, sort of sour flavour, so they're a bit too sour to eat as a just a normal eating apple, but they are good for cooking. So the way to tell if they're ripe is to cut one in half, or bite one in half, and see whether the seeds are brown. If the seeds are still white and undeveloped, then it's not ripe yet. There you can see the seeds are brown, so these are good to pick. So one of the things I'm planning on making this year is a fruit lever with blackberries. And I like to add a bit of pectin in, and these are a really good source of pectin. So I'll add some of these in with the blackberries. Crab apples are much smaller than cultivated apples. These are, oops, these are about as big as they get. That'll do. Onwards. I'm also noticing quite a lot of these sweet chestnut trees here. Now they're not ready yet. They'll be ripe in about a month's time, but it's a good reminder to come back here later to collect sweet chestnuts, one of my favorite harvests. It's been a great year for blackberries this year. I think because of all the rain we've been having, it's been a really wet summer. But there's blackberries all the way to the back. Obviously I won't be getting those. I'm not gonna be climbing through the brambles, but pretty much all the way along here. Absolutely full of blackberries. So I'm going to be picking some of these, as I said, for a fruit lever. I should be doing a video on that soon. If you've never made it before, I recommend it. It's especially good for kids if you want to eat more fruits because you don't have to put any sugar in it. It's basically just pureeing the fruits, spreading it out on a parchment paper and dehydrating it so that it goes into a almost leather texture. And it's a bit like those fruit roll-ups that you can buy in the shops, apart from they're just made with blackberries and apples or any fruits of your choice, really. Just look at all these beautiful berries, thousands of them.
and they don't seem to get eaten much by the wildlife. Most of these will just rot on the bush. They still get eaten by slugs and insects. It's not like they're wasted, but it just amazes me that people actually buy blackberries this time of year because they're quite expensive. And you can go to pretty much any park, hedgerow in the UK, and they're full of blackberries. That'll do for them now. I do want to collect a lot more blackberries, but there's plenty growing near a home anyway, so I'll collect them there. There's some heavy rain on the way, so uh, I want to try and finish filming before that comes in. Some nice looking Gelder rose here. These are edible when cooked. I'm not planning on making anything with Gelder rose this year, so I'm not going to pick any. But these are particularly nice looking berries here. Very vibrant red. This is wild carrot. I'm going to collect some of these seed heads. Mm, lovely carroty smell. Some nice looking dandelion greens there. I'll take the freshest ones in the centre. I like dandelion greens because you can pick them pretty much all year round. I put these in smoothies quite a lot or just eat them as a salad green. There's another harvest that's not quite ready yet. These are beech nuts. And I reckon another couple of weeks I'll be harvesting these. And I'm going to be making a beech nut oil with them this year. Walnuts are another harvest to keep an eye on. They're probably still about a month away from being ready. Here's one I found on the floor. You can see it's not quite developed yet. By the way, you want to be careful handling these. See where it's getting dark there? It's a bit like an ink, and if you get that on your hands, they'll be stained for weeks. Just keep finding more and more of these hazel trees, absolutely full of hazelnuts. It's a really good spot here. Just loads of hawthorn, hazel, beech, all the way along here. Lots of good native trees, absolutely full of fruits. It really is an abundant time of year. From around now until November, our ancient ancestors would have been using this time to fatten up or collect enough food to preserve for the lean times in winter and early spring, especially nuts and seeds because they're really high in protein and fats. The leaves of the small leaf lime are one of my favourite salad greens in the spring, but these are 
far too old to eat now. But if you look at this suckering growth at the base of the tree, you see it's really bright green and fresh, and that is good for eating. I would pick this apart from this is a really popular dog walking route, so I don't trust that this isn't covered in dogweed. So it's a shame because these are really, really nice leaves. The elderberries are just about ripe for harvesting now. I'm not going to pick them today because I've got quite a lot of stuff to be getting on with. I want to be making a elderberry syrup soon, so maybe even the next week I'll go out and pick a load of the berries. Here's a couple of herbs that I use for herbal tea. I've got a nice patch of self heal. and some yarrow as well. So this is self heal here, with the purple flowers. So I'll just collect these flower heads and use those for making tea. They've got quite a lot of health benefits. They're supposed to really help with problems with the throat and the glands. I don't know too much about herbal medicine, but I just like to drink it as a tea every now and again. And also yarrow here with the white flowers, member of the daisy family. You can use the flower heads and also the leaves for making tea. The brighter green leaves, the fresher growth is better. There we go, that'll do me for today actually. I do love a wild food harvest. Not only are you getting loads of free food, but it's just a nice relaxing way to spend an afternoon. So let's just have a quick run through of what I've picked. So I've got loads of hazelnuts, really nice harvest of those. So I'm gonna be using those for making hazelnut butter, homemade Nutella, and maybe some hazelnut flour for making cookies and stuff and I'll also just keep some for putting in muesli and porridge. So I've got crab apples and blackberries which I'm going to use for making fruit leather. I've got my hawberries which I'm going to use for making hawberry ketchup. I've got some dandelion greens for smoothies and some wild carrot seeds. I'll use those in spice mixes along with like hogweed seeds and a few other spices like that and I've got some yarrow flowers and greens and some self hill which I'll use for herbal teas so I should be putting up some recipe videos soon of the stuff that I've been making with this okay and thanks for watching